Hi everyone. Uh, hope you are all doing good. Uh, it's been a long time that I made videos on YouTube. It's been uh, very uh, busy days for me. Um, you all know uh, that I have recently moved to a new organization. Um, and I also moved to US. Uh, when I posted this on LinkedIn, there are a lot of messages uh, wishing me good luck. But apart from that, a lot of people were asking me, um, how did you move to US from India? Uh, you know, I thought, uh, you know, I'll make a video so it can answer everyone's question, right? So so my case is pretty unique. Uh, like I worked for Clipboard Health from India remotely as a contractor. So, uh, so it means I sit in India and the company doesn't have any presence in India. It has only uh, offices in US. So which means I'm a contractor. Um, uh, you know, even though I'm a full-time employee, but I'll be treated as a contractor because the entity is not present in India. So I was working there for almost two years and um, I was, you know, kind of a little bored with, with uh, you know, uh, in the same place for a very long time. I, I was in my same place for like almost five years from COVID. So, so I thought, um, you know, maybe I'll give a try and go to US. Uh, you know, this is just my friend, you know, he he was uh, asking me if you want to come here, you know, and all that. So, so we just gave a try because uh, HNB is all about lottery. So I got the client letter from uh, the clipboard health, um, and I applied via another consultancy. Uh, since I already have an, uh, for uh, you know, since I already working with uh, clipboard health, it's a U.S. based company. So I find a consultancy that uh, you know help, you know, help me to file a H1B petition for me. And uh, and H1B is all about luck. Uh, fortunately, I got um, clicked in the lottery. Um, and then the interview happened. Uh, and then I traveled to US. I was working for Clipboard Health for almost three to four months here. Um, but then, uh, you know, it was it was startup. Um, and uh, it was a risky job in general. And I also thought about, you know, moving to a different organization for stability. Because I want H&B. And there are a lot of risks associated with h and I'll come to that later, but this is how, what it is. So I worked for Clipboard Health. Clipboard Health gave me the client letter. Um, and then I applied beyond the consultancy to come here to US. And now I moved from the consultancy to a full-time uh, job at Findra. So this is the whole journey. Uh, but if you ask me one question, like, uh, you know, a lot of people are asking, like, tell me how we can move similar way like mine is a very unique case because most of you might be working for an indian based organization so see the good way the ideal way to get into us uh, is you work for cts wipro infosys or someone some companies that have presence in both india and us and uh, you get on site from your company and then they send you to us so that's the best way most of the companies does that some come via tcs some some people come via Amazon, some come via Google. So there are different companies that are offering this. Um, even though the numbers were reduced uh, considerably, but still there are people who come uh, by this option and this is the best option available out there. And uh, when the lottery, US lottery, uh, you know, uh, starts, there are a lot of consultancies that files petitions for uh, people. And one important thing is, uh, there are a lot of scamsters available. So you have to be very careful about uh, which company or consultancy that you are choosing with. So it has to be uh, genuine, right? And uh, so please, you know, put all your efforts in identifying and finding good company, right? Um, and uh, there are very less chances that your H&B can go through uh, unless you have a client letter. So it means you need to have a job in US before you can try here, right? That's that's your best chance of your HNB getting approved. I'm not saying this is the only way, but sometimes that your your visa interview get may, may get rejected because you don't have a client letter or you already don't have a job with you, right? So, so that is one of the problem. Again, if you're coming to US for earning money, you have to think about it much, right? In my case, me and my wife both worked and uh, my wife had to resign from her job in order to come here because if you have a spouse who is working, 
um, they cannot come and work directly here. So there are a lot of processes uh, involved. For example, the H1B employer, my H1B employer have to file a perm, the PR process for me. And it might take, you know, that I-140 to arrive in most two years. And then I have to apply for EAD, which is work authorization for my spouse. Uh, it may take six to 12 months to come. And, and after that, only my spouse can start working, right? Mm -hmm. So in my case, we are recently blessed with a baby. So um, we thought she made, uh, my wife might also take some break. So for us, it's okay. Uh, so she may resume to work, you know, once we get all this into process. Again, not all the companies will give you firm, which means your your wife or spouse may not be able to work even for five years, right? And uh, if you are coming to US via H&B, you have to at least uh, know the expenditure here, right? Let's say if you're going to San Francisco, New York, um, in Texas and all the places, the, the cost of living is pretty high. Even the place where I live, Virginia, it's it's pretty high. So so you need to take into consideration of all these things, the housing cost, um, you know, you cannot survive in most places without a car, uh, in most places. Uh, maybe in, in in New York, yes, you you get public transportation, but if you, if you want to live outside to cut the rent cost, you may have to get a car because without car, you cannot go to places here. So it's the public transportation is not as good as that we have in India. And Uber is Uber or Lyft, whatever the uh, riding services that you want to avail, which will be pretty costly. So if you want to get a car, um, you need to have a good credit score because you want to get it in loan, right? So you might, since you are traveling newly to US, the 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 APR rates might be high. So the interest percentage might be high. So uh, you need to take all this into consideration before choosing your location and coming here. And at the end of the day, you might not be able to save a lot of money um, from your h &B job because you need to pay 30, 35% tax. Uh, and then on top of it, you have to spend on your rent, uh, which is which is pretty high here. Um, and then you 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 will have your car, and then you have to pay your health insurance, your car insurance. If you are going to stay on rent, you have to also get your rent renters insurance. Um, and everything is going to be very costly. So you need to calculate all these things before coming here. Um, and if you are earning more than twenty five lakhs per annum in India, I don't think you, I don't think you could save that much here if you are coming here in hundred k job. So at least you need to earn 150 or 200K, um, which is which is pretty hard. Like unless you you are very talented and you are very lucky enough to uh, get calls from companies. Because I was on job search. It was very difficult for me to get the screening call from H&B people, like, like the HR people. The reason being I'm on a H&B visa and not a lot of companies will be ready to take people on H&B. People will be ready to take, uh, the companies will be ready to take uh, people on H4 EADs, uh, PRs, citizens, because they don't have to deal with H&B transfers. And H&B transfer premium processing might cost them $8,000 to $9,000 for the company. So not a lot of companies will do that. Again, the problem is they also have to wait for you to join them. So uh, it, it might typically take like one to two months. Uh, so it's pretty hard and uh, uh, most of the companies that I apply uh, will never call you back. Even though you have all the skill sets, um, you may not get the call back because the number of people aspiring for jobs in US is very higher uh, than that you could imagine what, what we have in India. So even I applied for a lot of manual testing jobs um, and I didn't get the call back. So uh, if you are not getting the call, uh, then there is very less chance you could you could uh, get a call from very good company, and then you also need to consider the fact that you might be already in a place they may ask you to relocate to a different location. So uh, again, you need to think about your um, house rental agreement that you have with your current uh, uh, you know owner uh, because you might have an agreement for one year, and and if you want to go in between three months, you have to pay some, them some money, right? So all these things 
or, or into account. And very importantly, if you lose your H&B job, you have to vacate um, from US if you cannot find a job in another 60 days. And I'm pretty sure it is very hard to find another job in two months because um, you may not get the calls first. Two, even if you get a call, the interview process may span up to four, five, or six rounds, which will be happening, you know, one or two interviews in a week, which might take at least three weeks for the interview process alone. And then the H1B transfer, uh, you need to submit all the documents. They need to fill the H1B. Um, so it is it is very difficult to, to basically find a job within two months. So again, if you are going to move out from US, you have to, you know, you might have a car, you have, might have a, a house on rent. So it's going to be a very pathetic situation. So uh, if you're on H&B, people mostly here stay in the same job uh, for stability because they don't want to go through all this uh, drama, right? So you cannot find a job within two months, even though you are highly skilled. Uh, most of the jobs that you apply to might have someone in the company. Um, they may have some friend of theirs, their relatives uh, to refer, right? So uh, it's very hard. And believe me, um, let's say if you're applying for a job at Amazon and I have people who can refer me at Amazon, but but the chances are you getting a call is again very less because unless the guy who is referring um, is in the same team which is hiring, there are very less chances you might get a call. So people might normally... Um, you know, let's say there is a team of 10 members, at least some, one of them will have an open, uh, you know, someone to refer to. So they'll give most priority to them. So it's it's very kind of difficult. So I think I have answered all your questions, but so to summarize, if you want to come to US, you have to first think about why do you really want to come to US, right? US is a fantastic company. You, got, you have um, really good environment to live in. You have you breathe fresh air, very less pollution. Um, you have all these all these benefits, right? So if you want to come, your kids, if you have kids, they might have a good and lesser education. Uh, you know, based upon the state that you are living in, uh, you know, you might have a lot of other benefits as well, right? So, uh, so, so there are a lot of benefits associated. But if you are thinking about earning money. Uh, in US, I think I think you have to earn at least more than 200K if you want to save some money, right? Uh, because most of the companies that pays 200K, they may ask you to come to San Francisco, right? The Bay Area. And the expense there is pretty high, right? One way or another, you have to, you know, see which one you want to go, right? Either uh, go for 120K job, live in some remote area or go for 200k and then live in bay area in either ways you will save save the same amount of money right so and if if you at least if both the people are working then yeah there is a lot of chances that you could save some money but um if just one with just one people earning mm, it's going to be a little hard i'm not saying you cannot earn money but it's going to be very hard and you cannot definitely beat 25 lakhs or you cannot save 25 lakhs or 30 lakhs per, per year it's going to be pretty hard and otherwise like if you are very stringent and you don't want to go to places you don't want to spend on anything here you can save that money but if you're living a normal life like other people then then it's going to be a very hard saving money right so that's all about it uh i only know about hnb but there are other processes for l1 and all that you can have there are a lot of videos already explaining about all these things but I think uh, I have covered whatever I know and my experience. Thank you, guys. I see you guys in another great video. Bye-bye.